Welcome Cogs. For Halloween this year I made a biblically accurate angel inspired headpiece, including about 100 resin cast eyeballs using 3D printing, Onship, Blender and Arduino. I'm not the best at coming up with ideas in a vacuum, so some of my favourite and best projects are with artists who can give me that impetus and inspiration that I sometimes struggle with when I'm by myself. I've had some really great ideas with my partner Little Empress, but some of them have been too ambitious. About three years ago we tried to make this headpiece which would look like a blooming flower, using a ton of sub-micro servos, a complex multi-jet fusion printed frame, and a literal sack full of super delicate resin petals. Unsurprisingly, it was just too complex to finish, especially with where my design skills were at at that time. So we learnt our lesson and simplified to an 8 servo headpiece, which would move with a smooth feathery wave. And this one was very inspired by one of my favourite creators, Cameron Hughes, who did the same thing with way more servos and feathers in a super compact and elegant frame. The full CAD models for both of these designs are accessible on my Patreon page in a new folder I have for my wearable animatronics, which also includes the rippling plate gauntlet I made back in 2020. Little Empress and I wanted to make something that was a little bit more of our own unique concept and at just about the maximum feasible ambitiousness considering we were also moving house at the time. I find that with projects like this, the first steps really are the hardest. How you go from rough sketches and half-baked ideas to something actually tangible can sometimes be really tricky. Previously, I'd already managed to get a usable 3D scan of Empress's head with an app on my phone and a lot of cleanup, so I translated this into a CAD compatible model using an incredibly finicky method that I figured out trying to make my robotic face for what would have been last month's video had it not failed horribly. But at least it gave me the ability to start with a clean, low poly base that was accurate to her head dimensions. The key to making designs like this work on short time scales is working quickly using the best tool for the job at that moment in time, and knowing how and when to cut corners. After selecting which servos I'd use, I made really quick blocked out shapes and used a lot of trial and error to find the angles and orientations for the structure and movements. Even though we all know the cardinal sin of CAD is leaving parts and sketches unconstrained, I think that when working with biology you sometimes just need to accept that the exact perfect position and orientation of a particular servo on a platform on a person's head is just not worth defining mathematically. Sometimes it just is where it is because I dragged it there and it looks right. Another issue is that sometimes you just don't know what the thing is that you're trying to make looks like, let alone how to start making it in CAD. So don't be afraid to leave the CADiverse sometimes. You can make a rough blocked out shape, import it into Blender as a mesh and using the sculpting tools to drag it around like plasticine until it makes sense in your head. And then you can put that design back into CAD as a point of reference and use it to make a real parametric design. That might sound a little convoluted, but I promise it can save you so much time when you're struggling to figure out what it is that you're doing. So to try and distill this initial part of the design, I'd say, start by defining the constraints in this case, it was Empress's head, and then try to arrange all of the components you know you're going to use freely in space. Then you can make the connecting pieces by looking at how all the different parts relate and interact with each other. All in all, it took a few days to get me to a stage where I had a prototype that fit and moved the way that I wanted. And honestly, it's all so much easier from this point onwards. One of the hallmarks of a good, biblically accurate angel design is eyes. A lot of eyes. Realistic eyes are something that I'm kind of known for, thanks to my animatronic eye designs, and also thanks to Scissor, but I knew that in this project I needed so, so many that it would be unfeasible to paint them all how I had done up until this point. I remembered an artist that I'd seen on Instagram, Zi Xing. They make these gigantic and incredibly detailed and realistic eyes, and they get an extra dimension by actually physically sculpting the details and folds in the irises and pupils of the eyes. I realised that if I were to sculpt the eyes in Blender and 3D print them, then this technique would be perfect for this project since it would allow me to paint all of the eyes significantly faster because they'd already have that texture that I'd otherwise have to paint in manually. It meant I could use thinned out, dark paints to seep into the cracks and add shadows and then use lighter, drier paints to pick out the highlights on top. I also made a super deep and exaggerated iris and pupil, which meant that once I cast over the eyes in resin, they were extra distorted and three-dimensional, which I think really brought them to life. Not strictly realistic, but it did mean that eyes at different angles had an extra pop, which I think really worked well for this design. I don't think I could have gotten through so many as well as I did had I not used this technique. With the eyes well underway, I needed to finish the design. I had some pretty ambitious organic surfaces I wanted to design, and at this stage in the project I had about two weeks until the shoot, so I was feeling the pressure. Generally I'm pretty good at managing my stress, but it's certainly something I've struggled with in the past, and something that really matters to me. BetterHelp recently reached out to me and I was delighted to accept them as a paid partner of today's video, having used their service a few years ago with some really positive results. 
Therapy gave me a safe space to share what was on my mind without judgement. My therapist helped me to take a step back and view things from a new perspective, guiding me through techniques that made it easier to manage stress and build healthier habits. And therapy isn't just for moments of crisis, it's a tool for personal growth. You don't need to be going through something to benefit from therapy. For me, it was more that I just had a build up of lots of pretty small issues and growing through them one by one at my own pace helped me to get moving again. BetterHelp is on a mission to make starting therapy easier and more accessible. Through their platform, you can connect with qualified therapists and communicate in a way that fits you, whether that's through personal sessions, daily group discussions, or even over text messages. Getting started is straightforward. Just fill out a quick questionnaire and you'll be matched with a therapist usually within a couple of days. And if the first match doesn't feel like the right fit, switching to another therapist is simple. With thousands of positive reviews on Trustpilot and support ready to answer any questions, BetterHelp is a resource you can trust for finding the right support. If you think you'd benefit from a therapy session, click the link in the description or go to betterhelp.com forward slash willcogley and get 10% off your first month of therapy. I would say that I'm still figuring out my workflow when it comes to design. I think it's something you never truly perfect. So in this project, I tried using Onshape's derive function to create a subcomponent in one part studio and then use that in a larger design in the overall assembly. This ended up working really well because I was able to design the snap locking latch by going through a few design iterations and it was pretty seamless to see any changes I made over here reflected in the overall assembly. I'm really happy with this design because it's fully print in place without fasteners and it holds a pretty good amount of weight. Using the latch mechanism as a starting point I was able to block out this base cross then by converting it to surfaces I could make the whole thing smoother, add intersecting surfaces for the eyelids and then boolean it all together with some thickness and I had this very organic looking part that was fully parametrically designed. As for the plate on the back which covered all of the servos and electronics while also leaving movement space for the wings, that part was less simple. I couldn't think of a way to make this in CAD so I went into Blender and used a NURBS surface to wrap a plane around all of the important features but it did mean that I had to manipulate each curve of the shape individually which was pretty time consuming. Using a plugin I could then export that surface into Onshape, make the eyelids using the same technique and then fit it into the motor housing. I used a pre-made two part screw interface with a predefined exclusion zone so all I had to do to make this attach together was to derive this part in and boolean all of the parts together. So to start with I was going to print everything in golden coloured silk PLA which does have a very nice metallic effect but after printing I found that it was just too brittle and the rigidity made it tricky to actually get onto Empress's face. I had used TPU for the first test fitting and that had worked really well so I brought some gold-ish colour TPU which worked way better. TPU is kind of known as just the flexible filament but remember that it does also have elite layer adhesion so if you need something to be lightweight and thin and you don't really mind if it's flexible then TPU is often a great option. Having printed it all out however, it didn't look very gold and it wasn't really matching the vision of the outfit so I decided to try out gilding which is where you apply a very thin layer of real gold and seal it in with a varnish. It sounds like it would be really expensive but since the mass of gold per sheet is so unbelievably tiny it's almost like a negligible amount of gold and so you can buy like 100 sheets for £10. The process turned out to be very tricky to control but what worked for me was to apply way more than I thought I needed and you'll find it all just crumbles away to barely anything left over once you start brushing it in. I also did the same thing on the back plate which I decided to fit and screw in before gilding since at this point I realised there was an issue with my design and it was very difficult to actually get on to the servos owing to the fact that it actually wraps around and envelops the motors and is only a single part so I had to kind of physically stretch it out to get it on. Since the back plate was rigid, it made the foil a lot easier to apply. The other aesthetic piece for me to do was making the 3D printed frames more wing-like with some real feathers. Firstly, I glued on the eyes and then I tried to layer up the feathers starting with a row of longer finger-like ones and then softer, wider ones to bulk up the base and disguise the stems. This was the other really time-consuming part, but I do love the effect it made. I wasn't certain that I'd gotten the base shape right, but seeing the final product, I do think they look a lot like realistic wings. When I worked on the first few projects with Little Empress, I didn't know how to design PCBs at that time. So this time I wanted to have the power circuit and Arduino on a single board because it makes troubleshooting so much easier when you're not trying to deal with a rat's nest of cables. I'm partnered with the JLC PCB who generously provide me with printed and assembled boards and I use their tool Easy EDA to make my designs. So what this printed circuit board is doing is serving as an interface point to connect my Arduino, the microcontroller which tells the motors what to do, 
to the motors themselves and also make it so I only have to provide a single 12 volt input and the power supply to the servos can run at 6 volts and the Arduino's logic can run at 5 volts. In this case I started off with the design I used for my eye mechanism board since the power regulation on there is already pretty good. I was worried I wouldn't have enough current to drive all of the wings simultaneously though so I added a secondary linear regulator circuit so half of my servos were driven off one side of the board and the others were driven off the other side. As it turns out, the servos really didn't draw that much current at all, peaking at just over one amp for all of them simultaneously, so I probably didn't need such a high powered board. At least it means that I have a good starting point if I want to drive some more high powered servos in the future. The boards arrived from JLC PCB, and as always they were super quick and manufactured perfectly, no issues whatsoever. I was however quite astounded to realise that I'd made the same mistake twice and gotten the whole pitch for the Arduino mounting position wrong, and so I couldn't just plug it in neatly, I had to solder on jumper cables and wrap them underneath the board and have the Arduino kind of floating in there. So in true Will Cogley fashion, it did end up being a bit of a rat's nest of cables anyway. Thankfully, the PCB did exactly what it needed to and supplied the power to the servos consistently while staying cool. I also added a button which just signals the headpiece to open or close. And since this was a last minute kind of thing and I couldn't find a nice wire to use, I just snipped up my old lightning cable and soldered that in, since I've recently converted to the flip. A big thank you to JLC PCB for helping me out with these PCBs. So it was the morning of the shoot and a test fit revealed that the whole thing was a little uncomfortable. So I sewed together a very quick sort of quilted padding on the most load bearing part of the cross and stuck it in there with some hot glue. Aside from that minor hiccup the whole thing went pretty smoothly. At this point I also realised that the giant eye I made would have been the perfect way to house the button rather than this little housing, but of course hindsight is always 2020. I could have simply programmed the servos to move from point A to point B, which would have meant that they moved linearly with constant speed, but I added some motion smoothing to make it look more natural. When we did the simpler feather headpiece, I used a sine wave to drive each servo between two positions smoothly, coming to a resting point at each of the endpoints of the movement. My idea this time was to generate another sine wave and use only the first quarter of that wave to start the motion quickly before coming to a gradual rest, which would look much more dramatic. I couldn't get this working even though I don't think there's anything wrong with that in theory, but I referred to an old video by James Rutan where he used a few simple lines of code to smooth the motion between two points exactly as I wanted. Thanks again James. I also needed to add some code to prevent the button from triggering twice in quick succession, so I made a piece of code which checks the current time and subtracts the last time the switch was triggered, and if the remainder is too low then it won't change state. If you want to see more of the final result, then check out Little Empress on Instagram and TikTok, link will be in the description. So a big thing that really limits this is that there's no battery pack right now. So the next time I do a project like this, I want to design some kind of multi-use wearable and chargeable battery pack. I do think that if you wanted to wear this to Comic Con or something like that, you could probably get away with just a carrying a battery pack around in your backpack but batteries do scare me, which makes me think that I should conquer my fear and design a really good battery pack. I also want to do more wireless stuff. I did design that wireless controller in the past with an XB, but that was so clunky and expensive and I'm sure there's a simple Bluetooth module I can use or something. I had a lot of fun with this project, but next I will be going back to my robotic head. If you want to get access to the CAD files for this project, you can head to my Patreon. The guys over there that support me really are the factor that enables me to make these videos now that I don't work full time anymore. So I am enormously thankful to you guys for making this dream a reality. Thanks again guys and see you in the next video.